Well, now I know some Sukazo again. This time uh, speaking as the gynecologist Nelson Sukazo. I decided uh, to make use of my YouTube channel also to speak a little about the troubles of gynecology and troubles which uh, most women and the general public are not aware. So, uh, uh, I'm the author of these two gynecology books. This one released in uh, 1990. This one in... Sorry. 1994 uh, and these books which are revolutionary and highly innovative gynecology books they were boycotted and persecuted due to my criticism to orthodox gynecology well no ah, wait a little let me pick up these papers because this time, uh, in order to facilitate my speaking here, I have this previously written. Actually, this is a topic uh, from this book. Well, uh, the biggest trouble with gynecology as women's medicine is that gynecology was already born uh, in the end of the 19th century with a double origin congenital defect. On the one hand, it came from obstetrics and on the other hand for from general surgery so there were obstetricians who developed uh, an interest on the non-obstetric disorders and pathologies of women and on the other hand general surgeons who developed a special interest in surgery on the female sexual organs. So, uh, along approximately 150 years, despite the great development of clinical gynecology, of functional gynecology, gynecology remains tied to obstetrics and surgery. All doctors who practice gynecology practice mostly obstetrics and gynecologic surgery. And this goes against uh, modern gynecology. So uh, this addition on the part of most colleagues uh, of the area became a paradigm and everybody who is intending to be a woman's doctor uh, they are brainwashed since the medical course in a way that they uh, have in mind is truly a brain washing, a mind washing process uh, within the academic field in order to make them to look at gynecology as depending on obstetrics and surgery. Okay.
Now I'm going to read this in order to facilitate uh, my speech. Well, uh, as I observed in my book, new perspectives in gynecology only released in Brazil, I wrote that, contrary to many people's suppositions, the intrusion of obstetricians and surgeons into gynecology has always been one of the more problematic aspects of women's medicine throughout time. Obviously, the obstetrician's main interest is directed to pregnant women. That means that they look at women from the point of view of obstetrics. Nevertheless, we must remark that, that as women's medicine, obstetrics is a specialty which by far, by far transcends women since it's also devoted to embryos and fetuses. And we must also remark that obstetrics only takes care of women in very peculiar periods of their lives, periods in which uh, women house inside their bodies beings other than women themselves and who equally are subject of the specialty. Here we already have a big difference between gynecology and obstetrics since gynecology is exclusively devoted to women. Consider that uh, most modern women only want to become pregnant and have children as actually they do in a very few moments of their lives. So it's easy to realize that obstetrics only takes care of women in moments of exceptions, in moments of exception. On the other hand, and contrary to obstetrics, gynecology takes care of women during most of their lives. In this way, as a consequence, not only of the need for having more patients, but also as a result of the frequent longing for omnipotence, repeating, longing for omnipotence existing in women's medicine, obstetricians never fail to also practice gynecology. In fact, examining the subject more carefully, this is a highly smart professional strategy for gaining and preserving the greatest number of patients as possible. But Considering the increasing complexity of modern medicine, this strategy inevitably implies a great loss in the quality of the medical assistance that is provided, since presently it is humanly impossible for the same doctor to practice two different medical specialties with the necessary competence and expertise. Nobody can do everything. Uh, in this book, New Perspectives in Gynecology, I made it quite clear that the enormous differences between gynecology and obstetrics uh, differences that concern mostly uh, to their respective clinical 
physiological, pathological and therapeutic aspects, these specialties are completely different. Parentheses. Besides the obvious fact that while gynecology takes care only of women, obstetrics takes care of women and fetuses. For all these reasons, gynecology and obstetrics constitute, without any possibility of rational doubt, separate medical specialties. So, to my view, uh, all the constantly repeated opposing arguments in favor of the simultaneous practice of gynecology and obstetrics, these arguments are totally devoid, destitute of scientific basis. And nobody assumes that publicly, but uh, what they actually intend is, above all, to protect the tradition and some professional corporate interests that cannot be publicly confessed. Considering the enormous technical progress of present-day medicine, from the point of view of medical knowledge and training, it is humanly impossible for the same doctor to simultaneously and satisfactorily practice two medical specialties so complex and different as gynecology and obstetrics. Even so, the irrational insistence on the integrated practice of both specialties by the same professional persists. That attitude is typically illusory and even megalomaniac. megalomaniac. As most women, regrettably, are not aware of the problems resulting from this traditional fusion tie between gynecology and obstetrics, they naively consider the integrated practice of both specialties as ideal and normal. This mistake is understandable on the part of patients, but it is unforgivable on the part of the medical class. And sometimes you can even notice the existence of some confusion between gynecology and obstetrics on the part of people who are not from the medical area. And this uh, just happens because most of the doctors who practice women's medicine introduce themselves as gynecologists and obstetricians, in English to, through the abbreviation odd gyne or odd gene. Therefore, the colleagues are those who collaborate the most for the maintenance of such confusion since they have the greatest interest on satisfying the naive and mistaken aspiration of most patients. It is obvious that professionally the gynecobstetricians, the odd guys, take the maximal advantage of such positions, while patients are frequently harmed in their existence and without being aware of that. 
and now ending this talk this talk as a result of all of this and regarding professional competition there is also a subtle and cruel process of exclusion of the gynecologists who do not practice obstetrics. Because of the present day accumulation of technical medical knowledge, the possibility of each doctor acquiring a complete mastery of his own specialty becomes more and more restricted. This happens because medical specialties themselves are going through a continuous process of division into subspecialties. In this way, the traditional bad habit of the practice of gynecology, gynecologic surgery and obstetrics by the same doctor becomes more and more impracticable and absurd because it actually implies the practice of three, three, three different specialties by the same doctor. Considering the human limitations, not only cognitive, but also of training and continuous upda updating, will it be possible for the same doctor to practice these three areas with the necessary competence? Okay. Thank you very much for listening to me. Many thanks. We can finish now.